Good morning. Today is Sunday, March 10, 2024, and this is our daily bread. The title is Know Christ and Share Him. It's from John chapter 7, verses 14 to 36, and the key verse is 18. It says, Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews there were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having been taught? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet not one of you keeps the law? Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon-possessed, the crowd answered. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus said to them, I did one miracle, and you are all amazed. Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses, but from the patriarchs, you circumcise a boy on the Sabbath. Now, if a boy can be circumcised on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing a man's whole body on the Sabbath? Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. At that point, some of the people of Jerusalem began to ask, Isn't this the man they are trying to kill? Here he is, speaking publicly, and they are not saying a word to him. Have the authorities really concluded that he is the Messiah? But we know where this man is from. When the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus, still teaching in the temple courts, cried out, Yes, you know me, and you know where I am from. I am not here on my own authority, but he who sent me is true. You do not know him, but I know him, because I am from him, and he sent me. At this, they tried to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. Still, many in the crowd believed in him. They said, when the Messiah comes, will he perform more signs than this man? The Pharisees heard the crowd whispering such things about him. Then the chief priest and the Pharisees sent temple guards to arrest him. Jesus said, I am with you for only a short time, and then I am going to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live, scattered among the Greeks, and teach the Greeks? What did he mean when he said, You will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come? Daily Bread First, Jesus points the crowd to God. The Jews were amazed by Jesus' teachings, but instead of just enjoying all the attention, Jesus made sure to point everyone's attention to God. That's something we should do too. As we share the gospel, people may be impressed by our testimonies, Bible knowledge, and how eloquently we speak. But it's not about us. When we start feeling like we want to take the glory for ourselves, we need to remember that God is the one who made us who we are today. So how can you point others to God in your conversations? By being honest about what kind of person we were before and how we still need God's help now. We still struggle and sin, but by God's grace, he has been helping us overcome. A transparent testimony is far more powerful than a showy one, and it gives others hope that they also can be changed. Second, don't miss the chance to know Jesus. Jesus told the crowd he wouldn't be with them for long. He says in verse 34, You will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. Maybe people would start looking for him later, wanting to believe and follow him, but by then, it will be too late and Jesus will have returned to heaven. Similarly, in our lifetime, 
there is a small window of opportunity for us to follow Jesus. Some people say, well, I'll follow Jesus later. But we never know when our time on earth is up. Procrastinating is never wise, especially when it comes to our salvation and how we spend our life. If we waste it on temporary comforts and pleasures, we'll regret it in the end. Apostle Paul once wrote, Indeed, I count everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. There is nothing greater than knowing Jesus. So why wait? A deep closeness with Jesus is what really makes life truly meaningful and blessed. Prayer, Lord, thank you for working in my life. Please help me to always direct others to you. Help me use my time on earth wisely to deepen my relationship with you and serve you faithfully. One word, there's nothing greater than knowing Jesus.